our environments. It's through mathematics that we model our reality. Really? I was counting in my mind, keeping it all to myself. So we got it. Math as part of life is just as natural as breathing. Yet, if we all have mathematics as a natural part of our lives, why do we often approach math with apprehension, even fear? Why are so many Americans math-phobic? Americans can do some mathematics well. When we look at international test results, they highlight the fact that Americans do learn to compute. They can do arithmetic. Where American students fall way behind other countries is in problem solving. In today's world, problem solving, handling data, interpreting information on the internet, and good mental math strategies for computation are essential for students to succeed in the competitive workplace. If we can teach kids at a very young age that there's more than one way to solve the problem, there's more than one way to look at it, look for the best way to do it, don't do it that way because I told you so, but find your own way to do it, I think that we're preparing them for life uh, far better and in that way, far better than anything else we could do. Now, in thousands of classrooms across America, an active reform movement in math education is energizing the way math is taught and learned by American students as well as by students in countries around the world. Okay, so we're going to start today with just some subtraction of string. Um, remember, you can do this work in your notebook so you can do it in your head and we have you answer just a little signal okay if you have time and you want to do it two ways go right ahead okay here's the first one teachers work closely with their students encouraging them to become active and reflective mathematical thinkers who can form relationships raise conjectures represent and prove their thinking and solve problems and you like this better why because it's much more shorter and it's quicker. We're at a precipice at this point in terms of reform and education in general. Reform is not only happening in mathematics, it's happening in the way that we view the world. It's happening in psychology, in cognitive psychology. It's happening in the models of economics. That in terms of the way that we understand change, We've begun to understand how, how relative everything is and how many variables they, there are and how much, when we look at, for example, psychology, how much behavior is connected to culture, how much knowledge construction is connect, connected to culture and to society. And when we look at, at what this means for education, we've begun to also understand that people learn to write by writing. Children learn to be mathematicians by being invited to be mathematicians in the classroom. The classroom is almost a microcosm. Classrooms are being transformed into math workshops where children are encouraged to use their own ways of thinking, to explore new directions and create elegant strategies for finding answers. In these math workshops, students enjoy being young mathematicians at work. Why do you know, like, why is it doing this? I don't know why it's doing that, and that's what's confusing me. Mathematicians work on problems. They search for patterns and relations. They model and prove their results to each other. I like to call it sort of playing in the playground of mathematics. You really become one with the problem. If you think about it long enough, if you engage with it long enough, and long enough is more than just a day or a week and sometimes a month, you become understanding of the internal structure of the mathematics. And I think we certainly don't deprive our graduate students of that, but I think many of us deprive our young people of that experience of really understanding a mathematical problem by giving them enough of an environment where they can experiment, discover, and play in the playground. Traditionally, teachers attempted to explain the same concepts that mathematicians historically had already constructed. Today, teachers begin with situations that are interesting and real to students and invite them to mathematize. Last year, when I, my sister had Thanksgiving at her house, we waited for hours for that turkey to be done because such a huge turkey needs to cook for a long, long time. So last night, I was thinking, I don't want everybody to have to wait and I want to make sure my turkey gets cooked on time. So I got out my old favorite cookbook, and here marked on this page, listen very carefully, 
because I need your help one more time. It talks a little bit about a thermometer, and then it says if you're not using a thermometer, allow up to 20 minutes to the pound for birds up to six pounds. How much, is, how much does my turkey weigh? 24. Lele? 24 pounds. 24 pounds. So it says for larger birds, which my turkey is, allow about 15 minutes per pound. So it says it right here in the book. I, ha I have to cook it for 15 minutes per pound. What I'd like you to do now, and I don't have a big uh, sheet of paper for you to work on today. You're going to use regular drawing paper. But I need you to help me figure out of how long I'm going to cook this turkey. Teachers involve children in making mathematical sense of situations in their own lives. They solve these problems together, and teachers move from group to group, questioning, conferring, supporting, and challenging. You said you have the 24 tens, right? So how many fives do you need? Now you need, how are you going to add all those fives on? I was thinking So you ended up with 360. What does this mean? 360 minutes. Oh. Do we have to figure out how many hours that is? Oh my god, that's actually so cool. In small groups, the children work together on the problem. Then the students come together in math congresses where they explain, prove, and defend their solutions. In a math congress, the class becomes a community of peers, questioning and attempting to understand each other's work. Amber and Vicky. You guys, do you think you can come up and share what you did? And remember, try and explain it so that we understand, and then everybody else needs to listen carefully. And if you have questions or comments about uh, Vicky or Amber's work, we can ask them when they're finished explaining. Well, we wrote all the things that we needed, like the turkey's 24 pounds, it's 15 minutes per pound, and then like, this is just to remind us. And then we start doing jumps of 15. And we, we like put together, we knew that 15 was 5 plus 10. So when, when we just put the, when we figure out the numbers, we did like, we did 90 and then plus 10 was 100, plus 5 more is 105. So, um, we kept doing it, and then we got here, um, 360. And what is the 360? You have to let it cook for 360 minutes. 360 minutes. Who thinks they can explain um, how Amber and Vicky figured this out? What did they do? When students are given a real-life problem to solve that genuinely interests them, they want to stay in the context of the problem, examine its structure, and play in the mathematical playground. There's one thing that they didn't figure out, how many hours, hours. 360 is. How many hours 360 is? You can count up to 60 minutes and then like circle that and keep on circling 60 minutes and then that would be how many hours there is. Mm -hmm. How do we know what 60 minutes? What do you mean? Because 60 minutes is an hour. I mean, what do we circle? Like, like you would have, you would get 10, 20, 30. Like, you would take We're off. We're counting by 15s, not ones. I, put, I, I know. What, you go, how much 15s would we have to circle to make 60? You circle up to the 60, then you keep going like that. Then how would you know the next number to circle? Two times, then you get to 60. Because 30 plus 30 equals 60. So then you keep doing that until you get up. Did you hear what he said? Teachers don't choose random problems. Instead, they thoughtfully pose questions that develop important mathematics.